Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back again with you guys for another episode of the Arsenal News Show. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Uh, apologies to those yesterday that tuned in for a stream that never started because there was, for some reason, two streams. There was two streams. I couldn't say nothing else other than the fact there was two streams and some people joined the first stream when StreamYard decided to make two, uh, when actually it was the second stream that was live. So sorry, hands up. I can only apologize for that. Uh, and a second thank you to Pablo for helping out with the microphone and the mic check this morning. I'm hoping that the microphone's working. Yesterday we had a few technical difficulties. If at any point during the show uh, it starts playing up, let me know and we'll switch to the backup, uh, which is the iPhone headphones. But other than that, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Drop a like on the video if you're new. And even if you're not, subscribe if you're new, especially if you're new. Um, but other than that, we're only a few days away. In fact, we're only two days away now from uh, the, the the game against Watford, which I'm very, very excited for. Uh, and uh, the preview show will be tomorrow with the members. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, and there'll be plenty more content. Harry Simu, I'll be joining him for the Canton Simu show on his channel at five o'clock this afternoon. So make sure you set your alarms for that as well. Good morning to everybody <clears throat> in the chat box. We've got Matt G uh, joining in first. I set this up quite early, 7.15 a.m. Take the missus to the station. And still Matt G's getting in here early. I don't know how he does it. He's some kind of superpower. I mean, it's the worst superpower ever, knowing when TGT is going live. If you're ever going to have a superpower, I'd probably pick that like third after flying and, and teleporting then tgt obviously mad mad this uh jose dave good morning to you harvey uh bruce lars omar uh andrew says i won't be here by am probably always either watching 10 minutes behind or in the car later in the day but keep up the great work and excellent content thank you andrew you're an absolute legend whether you're watching this live people or you're watching it on catch up or whether you're watching it on delay you're all very welcome to join in and uh, or just make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe, obviously. Good morning to Gene Orburn and Francis and Marcus and Jonty. Joshua, Liam, Afsar, good morning to you. Let's scroll down a little bit more. I always miss out some people in the mornings. MFB, Steven, Sartvik, Pablo, thank you as always, mate. Uh, Ace Lucas says, blimey, it's busy already waiting for the 8 o'clock to Canton Street. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Trevor, frankly, Latvian Gouda. Good morning to all of you guys. Sorry, I can't say good morning to everybody. Um, but I hope you're doing good and I hope you're doing well. Let's uh, crack on with the start of the show. Uh, we've got a, quite a few things to talk through today. As always, please do go and subscribe to the Arsenal way. We're on our way now to 10,000 subs. It's mad how quick this is picking up. And myself and Chris sat down and did a player ratings of all of the current squads uh, that have played this season, not including players that have left, uh, and gave them scores out of 10 for the season so far. Very interactive show. You can still get involved with that by putting your player ratings in the comment section of the video but do go and check that one out uh, in terms of the articles that have been written and are going to be going out as well uh, a lot of people were asking me and tweeting me tom jed spence is linked to Bayern munich do you still want not want him at arsenal and so i thought i'd write about that and so i did so a piece is going out on i think it's out now in fact i think it's out right now this very second it dropped eight o'clock um, and you've also got the the piece on a uh, myself and Josh Williams did a piece looking at kind of the players that could get linked to Arsenal. So we did a transcript off of that and a piece going out at 11 a.m. on the poll that we did. If you remember, we did a poll on Robert Lewandowski. I actually wrote a piece about that and the reaction to that poll. So that'll be going out at 11 a.m. as well. So plenty of stuff to check out during the day. Now, interesting news regarding Tommy Yasu, uh, a little bit of an update on his injury. It said that the injury is not as bad as it could have been. And I know that's pretty vague, but that is the information that we've got. It's not as bad as it could have been. He shouldn't be out for too long. He may miss the Watford game, but hopefully we'll be back uh, in the next couple of weeks or so. Shouldn't be too bad. But Cedric has been doing pretty well. I think we can all agree in that time. So at least we've got that to be positive about. Uh, another interesting story uh, coming out of uh, Football.London and Chris Wheatley in particular, talking about the fact that Arsenal are looking into the South American market. And we're actually targeting a young player, 21-year-old uh, called Laura, uh, who plays in South America. Uh, right back, don't know much about this guy at all, other than the fact that he's 21 and his name is Gilmar Laura. Uh, having a look at his transfer mark this morning, he's played three games for his club. His club are Club Sporting Cristal. Never heard of them. Don't know anything about him. He's only rated at £630,000, according to transfer mark. So not a lot to go off. Um, but Arsenal are said to be looking into the South American markets because of the impacts of Brexit and trying to work their way around things because uh, he's got, I think, caps for Peru. 
at this stage, which, uh, yeah, he's played six times for the Peruvian senior national team, which makes it easier for Arsenal to get players in from South America if they've got those caps and appearances for their senior country. So one to keep an eye on uh, and maybe one that we're moving ahead for. Speaking of transfers in, Noah Lang uh, has cropped up again as another Arsenal link. Now, if you remember this story, we covered Noah Lang uh, at the end of last year. He was being linked quite heavily with a move to Arsenal. He again has been linked with Arsenal. A number of reports coming out from the continent that the Gunners are looking at the Netherlands international club. Bruges winger can play as a centre forward, can play in a right wing position, a left wing position. And I spoke uh, to uh, Bruno Lage, uh, Lage uh, who's actually really interesting Um Belgian journalist earlier on in the season and he described him as being better than Nicolas Pepe maybe biased um, but uh, very much so he's an interesting versatile young player but does have a couple of issues supposedly on the social side of things um, but I'll let you do your research on that to find out a little bit more um, anyway I, we talked there about players from South America and yet another player that we've talked about previously Savio from Atletico Mineiro Brazilian winger 17 years of age made a senior debut in the Brazilian leagues at just 16 he has been linked with both Arsenal and Manchester City and the Red Bull franchise as well but Manchester City looked the closest to bring in Savio in now interestingly reports that came out of Brazil yesterday claimed that apparently Arsenal have been working very, very hard to try and find a solution and to actually usurp Manchester City to sign Savio. The reported figure was around the 5 million, 6 million euro mark. Arsenal are trying to offer Savio basically a route into the first team in order to convince him that Arsenal is a better place to choose than Manchester City, where obviously he might find it significantly more difficult to get into their first team, trying to sell in the project where we're going. It's one to keep an eye on because Man City looked absolute outright favourites to sign Savio. And now we are definitely pushing to try and get a deal done for him. Very excited, very highly rated winger, really interesting player. And if Arsenal can get this over the line, it would be a bit of a coup to get one over Manchester City, especially with their South American connections. Edu, we're looking at you, mate, pulling those Brazilian strings. Let's see what happens. Uh, and lastly, uh, or second to last, I suppose, we've got a big story to talk about at the end. Um, Darwin Nunez. I know a lot of people have been waiting for the first links with Darwin Nunez. Well, they came out yesterday. Uh, according to reports on the continent, Arsenal are considering a move for the player that is worth upwards of £50 million. Pounds. Uh, Uruguayan striker. Uruguayan, I believe, yeah. Darwin Nunez. And... Uh, Certainly a player that's on the lips of a lot of people. Been scoring for fun for Benfica. And despite not really showing all that much when he, we played against him in the Europa League, has, you know, not exactly moved heaven and earth, but he's definitely moved significantly since that point to get back into scoring form. And his physicality, his still quite deftness on the ball as well, means those characteristics are what Mikel Arteta is looking for in a player. So Darwin Nunez finally getting those links to Arsenal for the first time officially. Uh, which is quite nice to see. And lastly, we have to talk about the return of the European Super League. Yes, those that thought this was dead, it is not. And uh, Agnelli, who is kind of the big man at Juventus and Florentino Perez, who is the big man or supposed big man, usually quite little, uh, <laughs> around Madrid, uh, they're trying to, again, along with Barcelona, revive the idea of a Super League. Now, what's interesting about this is that Arsenal are not said to be part of the plans. However, Manchester United, Liverpool, Chelsea and Manchester City were rumoured to be involved. So despite all that apology from John Henry to Liverpool, if you remember that heartfelt video apology to Liverpool fans, supposedly Liverpool are very much involved in talks. Uh, Arsenal, though, have decided not, it seems. If these reports are to be believed that are circulating, Arsenal not involved. If that's the case, you have to say big props to Josh Kroenke for, for standing by what he said when other teams have not seemingly done that. We're still waiting for the official announcement of this. Um, but again, they're trying to come back because the Champions League, of course, announced their restructuring that will take place starting, I think, the 24-25 uh, season. It will exceed the Champions League, expand from 32 to 36 teams. It will then move away from a group stage structure to a league structure that will take place across one or 100 matches in total could be played. Or more, I think it's an extra 100 matches will take place as opposed to the current system. You will play five home, five away games in the league, in the Champions League during that season that will be decided based upon a seeded 
ranking of fixtures according to historical merit and uh, qualification will be very similar. I'm not sure how those extra four teams are being added to the Champions League for that season. That's yet to be kind of decided, I think. But I'm I'm fine with the changes to the Champions League because there's two key things that when people turn around and say the new Champions League is basically just the European Super League, it isn't. And there are two massive differences between the changes the Champions League is making and what the European Super League proposals were. And firstly, it's that you need to qualify. And that's a big one. Uh, if you want to get into the Champions League, there's nothing that says if you're this club or this club, you will play in the competition. You have to qualify through the usual means of finishing in a certain position in your league table or winning the Europa League, I imagine as well, will come into it. But you have to qualify to get into the competition. The second part is that it's run by an independent body, being UEFA. Now, I'm not going to sit here and praise UEFA because that would be ridiculous because UEFA, as we know, have been associated with plenty of less said about it, the better. But the point is, is it's not being run by the clubs like the European Super League would have been. And as, anything, as, as much as we can to try and avoid clubs running the competition themselves, that is the best thing for these types of competitions. A lot of people, including myself, would rather the Champions League went back to the old European format of just, you know, champions of each league playing, i.e. a Champions League. That's not going to happen. I'm more in favour of this league system in the Champions League because I think it will create a greater spectacle. I think you'll see better matches because the group stage can get a little bit dull. I think we can all agree that sometimes the group stage can be pretty boring. This league system where teams will play 10 games, five home, five away, will create much more drama. And certainly in the final stages where the teams are overtaking one another before the end of the final game of that league, Swiss league system. So that's kind of my view on it. The negative is that there'll be four extra games that will be taking place during that league situation as opposed to the group stage. So there'll be more games uh, which is not so great for players and for coaches, arguably for fans' pockets as well, because it's going to cost more to go to more games, of course, too. Um, and that side of it's not as great. You can imagine that the League Cup, there's going to be, you can imagine there's going to be protests for the League Cup to be cancelled in favour of allowing the big teams to play in the Champions League competition. But it's certainly an interesting proposal, but the European Super League expects news on that in the next 48 hours or so to see clubs like Liverpool, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester City and Manchester United supposedly involved. Arsenal and Spurs not involved. Uh, it seems that Arsenal's owners have listened to their fans. Liverpool's, Chelsea's, Cities and United's have not. Um, and, you know, when it happened, we always said it was never going to go away forever. It was always going to come back. Uh, uh, Sheffarin, who is the head of UEFA, said some really poignant and pointed uh, comments about those that have tried to start this off, highlighting the fact that they tried to start the first Super League during a pandemic, and then they tried to start the second Europa League, uh, or the European Super League, sorry, uh, during a, a war scenario, which is, you know, it's a fair comment. They're, they're taking advantage of the situation of when they announce it. So it's pretty, it's pretty dastardly um, done, and uh, it's a really... It's a big challenge that us football fans, again, will have to face and rise up and protest. And uh, whilst I couldn't attend the first protest, if there ever was a second one from an Arsenal perspective on this, I would certainly be there and doing my bit because it's it's absolutely ridiculous that a Super League owned by the clubs where they can control what and who goes into it is a joke, is an absolute joke. Anyway, that's all of the news. We're going to jump to your comments and your questions in the chat box in just a moment. If you haven't already dropped a like on the video, please make sure you do and subscribe to the channel if you are indeed new around here and turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. Let's jump into the chat box. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying. Um, Pinny Wien says, if the chat, box, <laughs> the chat box do not hit the like button, Arsenal would join the Super League. You heard it here first. Um, Paul says, uh, European Super League and revised Champions League in a nutshell is about greedy millionaires fleecing fans. Look, what you can't say is that the Champions League renovations aren't to generate more money. I think we all know that that is certainly the case. There are some differences, though, between the renovated Champions League and what the European Super League proposals were. So there are differences, and that is important. Um, Lavi and Gunas says, first time they tried to launch it during the pandemic. Now they're trying to do it during a war. Shameless. Might be a grim way to look at it. Uh, no comment. I think it's the right way to look at it, mate. They're trying to take advantage of the situations. They're trying to take advantage of the clubs being in positions where they're going to need money. 
we all know what's happening. We all know what's going on. We're not idiots. We're treated like idiots by the authorities and by certain clubs, but, you know, we're not. Answer says, the only thing wrong with the European Super League is the lack of meritocracy. These teams want to get rid of a greedy third party, but the lack of meritocracy is the issue. Exactly. That it is, it's a catch-22, isn't it? Because the meritocracy or the, the governing bodies, or the independent governing bodies have got their issues. But the issue is, is you can't not have an independent party overseeing competitions because otherwise you get like you can find corruption and stuff like that breeds far more quickly and easily uh and there'll be unfairness and having three teams or however many teams own the competition would be ridiculous so you can't have that and also you need to have qualification you have to have relegation you have to have promotion teams like real madrid juventus and Barcelona need to be in levels of perilousness where they can fall out. Like you've looked at Barcelona in the Europa League this season. That needs to happen as well. It needs to have that level of jeopardy about it. Uh, Anne says, why do you think we're not being respected by pundits and the media? If we win on Sunday, we would have won three games in a row for the second time. Only Man City and Liverpool have done the same. Because Arsenal are unfashionable, mate. And, you know, I'm fine with that. Keep talking about other teams. Keep hyping up Antonio Conte and Spurs despite the fact they're losing all their games. Keep writing off Arsenal. The more you write off Arsenal, the more we go under the radar, the more it'll look even better if we do it. Don't hype us up. I don't want to be hyped up. I want to be let to do what we're doing. And then when hopefully we achieve our targets, we can shout about it as much as we like and how much people doubted us. Mike says, sorry, a late morning all from me. Super League sucks. Let's go back to a good old knockout Champions League for Champions League, uh, for Champions and a Europa League for the second to fifth place teams. I do tend to agree. Uh, FOK TV says, Nunez and Jesus or Schick and David. Arsenal should defo get a tall and small strikers so we can attack in different ways depending on opposition. I've always said Schick and David are my two choices, so I would go for the latter. Uh, Weedy says, if Arsenal are really scouting South America, how have we not been linked with Endrick Felipe? as he is 15 and already being dubbed an extra rounder. We actually have, um, and we've covered it on this show. We have been linked to Endrick of Palmeiras. Uh, Arsenal scouts were in Brazil watching the player and have been for some time. So we are linked with him, but I imagine that he'll end up going to somewhere else instead. Uh, King says, this is more on UEFA than the other teams. Long-time corruption and mismanagement is why we are here today, but bodies is wrong. Um but teams should not own a competition. And this is the problem we have. This is the catch that we're in. Uh, Olu says, hey, Tom, the Premier League is run by the clubs, right? I don't think so. The Premier League is is still an independent kind of party in a way. The Premier League is the authority. So as far as I'm aware, no. Because the Premier League is also separate as well from the FA. But people might be able to tell me I'm wrong. But in my opinion, the club should never run uh, the competitions themselves. It should never be run by the clubs. Uh, Dave says, the likes of Real Madrid, etc., run the current format of the Champions League anyway. Um, not as much as maybe you think they do in comparison to what a Super League would be, uh, Dave, is what I would say to that. Uh, Savic says, we need multiple centre-forward slash striker options. So how would you go about it in terms of player profiles? And it, also, is there any academy product worth uh, promoting if we spend too much on one striker? You look at players like Balogun, of course. Uh, you look at someone like Mika Bireth. Those are the two players that have the most potential in that striking role. Uh, Edwards is looking good, but he could yet leave in the under-18s. You've got another young striker called Sago Jr. that's coming through too, um, but he's still very much too young uh, for that. But Mika Bireth would be the next one after following Balogun to be given an opportunity. Uh, but the profiles, we just kind of talked about it. One physical striker like a Schick and one more diminutive player like a Jonathan David, I think, would work. Uh, Barnett says, if the Super League had sporting merits, would you join it? Uh, no, because it's owned by the clubs. And I'm against the competitions being owned by the clubs. Stephen says, I have been doing some calculation concerning getting into fourth place. I think we are looking at 70 points. That's 25 points from 14 games. What are your thoughts? It's definitely possible. That's a possible what? 42 points so we can drop a maximum of 17 between now and the end of the season if we want to do that i think that's very possible very possible indeed uh phillips says do you think chelsea might have to sell chelsea do have to sell and chelsea chelsea are selling um at the moment so We'll see what happens and who buys them, but they are selling. That is the situation right now. Mike says, in uh, kit news, new England Lioness home kit is superb. Iridescent logos and badges. 
they're also doing the men's sizes for lard asses like me. Uh, do they have separate kits then, the Lionesses and, and, the, and the men's team? It's interesting if they have different kits. I thought they always wore the same. That's so new to me. AFC West Mid says, uh, do you really think it's a bad thing? More money, more big games against bigger clubs, bigger appeal to players coming in. I get the corruption it's based on, but we will get left behind. Yeah, I do think it's a bad thing. Um, I absolutely think it's a bad thing. We talk about being left behind. The Premier League also said that there would be sanctions put into teams that tried to start a Super League again. The Premier League, the leagues that we play in, are not going to be looking kindly on participation in a breakaway Super League. It's just not going to go down well with those sides. So trying to get, tr trying to say that we're going to get left behind, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we will. Uh, Mitchell says, Premier League is run by the club. Did you not see Rodri's handball? <laughs> uh, that guy there says, do you think that Chelsea will become more like Arsenal and Man United and Spurs and Liverpool? Um, it depends who buys them. It, it depends who buys them. That's ultimately the answer to the question. If you get an owner that comes in that's as passionate and that's as um, invested as Roman Abramovich, then no. But if you get an owner that comes in that's not got those, um, I was going to say morals, morals is definitely the wrong word, motives that hasn't got the care, hasn't got the passion, hasn't got the want to invest like Abramovich does, then yeah, Chelsea will fall away. And they're already making big losses. Despite winning the Champions League, they made a bigger loss than us at the end of the June 2021 account. So, you know, I say despite winning the Champions League, the Champions League doesn't fall within... Uh, does it fall with... I suppose it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does fall within it. So despite winning the Champions League, they still made a huge loss. So we'll have to wait and see. But I don't know when that would show up in the accounts, to be honest. Harvey says, uh, Mike would know. Who's in the chat? So there you go. Harvey says, Isaac has not been playing much lately. I know he had some small injuries, but with him on the bench so much, don't you think it was weird that they wanted 90 million? It's not weird that they wanted 90 million because that was the release clause and they didn't have to sell him. It'd be weird if they asked for anything close to that in the summer. But in January, they had no need to sell. Um, but definitely, I think we made the right choice in not activating it. Barnett says, if the Super League had a governing separate body and sporting merits, would you join it? Well, that's the Champions League, Barnett. That's that's the new proposals for the Champions League. So if the Super League was owned by an independent body, let's call it, I don't know, Afia, Afiu. Let's call it Afiu. You know, I think that would work, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, it had relegation, it had qualification. Oh, wait, no, that is just the Champions League. That is just what the Champions League is. So why put it into the hands of the clubs when you've already got this separate governing body? That is what you're describing is the Champions League. So it doesn't really work. Uh, after you, by the way, was UA for backwards for those that didn't get that. <laughs> um, Matt G says, uh, do you think uh, Partey's performance uh, would get more recognition if he stopped shooting uh maybe but i think he's done great this this year in 2022 so far i think he's been one of our best players so maybe if he stopped shooting it would get more but i still think he's been pretty darn good uh olu says the premier league is a private company wholly owned by its 20 member clubs who make up the league at any one time each individual club is independent working within the rules of football i i think there's still kind of this it's a yeah it's a private company where it's owned owned by the 12 the 20 club but they're kind of the people at the top are still independent of the clubs it's a weird scenario like we got uh, richard garlic in from the premier league he didn't go from arsenal to arsenal he didn't go from one club in the premier league to arsenal he came from the premier league to arsenal they're still independent within that setup so it's slightly different um king says the structure at arsenal when the cronky came in is better than chelsea current structure i don't see another <clears throat> roman taking over and hopefully they will not be very successful um the gunas pods mike says if you were wanting to splash massive cash on a club and turn it into a giant you don't buy chelsea you buy a sunderland or leeds or sheffield wednesday or newcastle um we'll see <laughs> we'll see uh barnett says the super league feels like the premier league reform imagine if arsenal said they wouldn't be part of the reforms at the time arsenal would maybe have made in the lower leagues um i understand what you're saying um but it is still quite different the premier league holds the power right now the super league is being invented because the european clubs want the piece of the pie the financial pie that the premier league has Premier League clubs have no motive to join a European Super League and the Super League will fail without the English clubs. So the English clubs have the power at this point in time. Um, but there are also a lot of 
um, loyal <coughs> clubs to UEFA, like PSG and Bayern Munich. Like they are, they seem very much loyal to um, to, to UEFA and to the Champions League. So I, I, I struggle to think that it will it will get off, and and there'll be more protests and more. I mean, imagine if the English teams went back on those apologies, went back on what they said last year. It would be bedlam, surely, absolute bedlam. Uh, Jean says Super Leagues are the death of country leagues and kills the team which are not invited. It's negative for all these clubs and by that, the recruitment. Um, Ronald says Chelsea will be bought by a coalition. Uh, Sugar Daddies will be wary of buying now as their shady deals could cost them their club. Uh, or Charlton Athletic. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, their owner needs to do a lot more, that's for sure. JDB says, if Jed Spence goes to Bayern and fails, Tom, it will look like the most intelligent and happiest human being on earth. I did write in my piece that, look, if he goes there and does well, I'll happily put the oven on and eat some humble pie. I just don't think that being linked to Bayern Munich justifies Arsenal being interested. They signed Buna Sar from Marseille. Did that make me want Buna Sar? No, it didn't. Did I want Eric Chupo moting? No, I didn't want Eric to promoting, to be honest. So just because you signed for Bayern doesn't make you suddenly a player that we should definitely want. They signed Coutinho. Did I want Coutinho? No, I didn't want Coutinho. So it doesn't always work just because a player's linked to a big club means that you necessarily want them more. It's like um, it's like when you're a child with siblings. Just because your sibling wants something, you then want it. It's you know, it's not like that. You don't have to have a like of a player more because they get linked to a big team. Lots of players move to big clubs and fail. It wasn't necessarily because they were linked to that club that made them good. So, you know. There's always things like that. Anyway, we're going to wrap things up there. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. I'll be back on Harry Simeon's channel at 5 o'clock for the Canton Simeon Show returning. There may also be another show on this channel this afternoon. Need to get confirmation on that, but I'll let you know about that in both the Discord server and, of course, on Twitter at Laguna Talk TV. Give us a follow there if you don't do so already. I'll also be live in an hour's time over on the Arsenal Way. Link to the channel is in the description. So plenty of stuff for you to tune into and to get your teeth sunk into Arsenal-wise as we start looking ahead to Watford on Sunday. We'll have a preview show for you guys tomorrow. And of course, the normal 8 a.m. show should return tomorrow. Possibly not, though. I may be taking a break from the show just on Saturday, but I'll let you know how it goes. Have a fantastic day, people. And as always, up the Arsenal.